Hey beautiful souls, how you doing? It's Jenny here, Too Much Woman. Just recently I posted a video of myself dancing on my Instagram stories and let me tell you, as a former dancer, as a public figure, as a, as a global speaker, that was really hard to do. You know, it's one thing dancing in a club with your friends, it's another thing, you know, dancing at home by yourself, and it's quite another thing to post that on social media, but I do it to prove a point. What I know to be true after 26 years as a global speaker is that invisibility suffocates the soul. Invisibility suffocates the soul. Not being seen is kryptonite to our spirit. I can meet someone and instantly, within 30 seconds, I can tell that they are hungry to be seen. And I see this, I have literally traveled the world. I've traveled the world in the past year. And wherever I go, I know this to be true. Invisibility suffocates the soul. So I have a couple of questions for you. First off, for those of us, although we instinctively crave to be seen, we instinctively want to be seen, what we've learned at some point in our lives is that being seen is dangerous, right? Shining is dangerous. There are repercussions. People criticize you. They condemn you. They shush you. They run from you. They hide from you. There's all kinds of judgment around that. It can be a very dangerous thing. So what do we do? Well, we're smart. We, we, we get small and we dim. And sometimes the way that we choose to be invisible is we gain a ton of weight because then we can hide behind our bodies or our clothes. Conversely, sometimes we lose a ton of weight, so we can become so small, almost invisible, waif-like. Other ways that we dim ourselves is we zipper our mouths, we don't speak up, we don't ask for what we want, for what we need, whether it's in the boardroom, the bedroom, at the dinner table, we mute our desires, our dreams, um, our sadness, our frustration, we put all of that on the back burner and we become very small, we dim ourselves. Now, conversely, on the opposite end of the spectrum, some of us, what we do to be invisible, this might sound counterintuitive, but follow me, some of us, including myself, become really loud. We become big mouths. We become very aggressive, very opinionated. So we can hide behind this tough person facade. We're really behind all that. There's a lot of shame and fear and sadness. So there are many, many ways that we did. My first question is, what have you done or what are you currently doing to feel safe and invisible? How are you dimming yourself? Number one. Question number two is, what is the repercussion of dimming? How has that impacted you? What is the repercussion of, of not showing up and being seen? You know, for a lot of us, it's a loss, a disconnection from ourselves. It's a loss of, of self-faith, self-trust, we lose courage and confidence in ourselves. When we abandon ourselves in that way, it really does a, you know, it's like a, a one-two uh, punch. It's like Muhammad Ali style to our self-concept, how we feel about ourselves, because we're not showing up and being seen. So question number one is how do you dim? Question number two is what is the repercussion of you dimming? Here's question number three. When we in fact dim, what we do subconsciously because we really, we really want to be seen. What we do subconsciously is we find some way to get attention. And it's usually unproductive and negative. It's just like the kid in the classroom who acts up just so that they can get any attention, even negative attention. So we see this a lot in social media, see it a lot on Instagram, you know, all these girls shaking themselves and trying to look all sexy, looking for that little dopamine hit, right? And the, the thing, the issue with that is that it's never satisfying, right? It's like we get a little hit and then we just need more. It's like this insatiable tapeworm over and over again. My first viral video was all about being seen and the risk of being seen. My second viral video was all about how that is not enough. It's just not enough to, to look outwardly to get that, that fulfillment. And so my third question to you is what are you doing? What kind of behavior are you demonstrating to get that little dopamine hit? And it's usually unproductive. So for some of us, we over obsess about how we look. Uh, for some of us, we work really, really hard. We hit it really hard in business so we can prove how worthy we are. Um, for some of us, we act up. We, we, there's a myriad of different ways. So question number one is how do you dim? Question number two is what are the repercussions of dimming? And question number three is, um, in what way do you kind of displace that? In what way is your subconscious vying for attention just to get that little dopamine hit? And then after we answer all of those three questions, the most important question emerges. 
is what can you do to show up for yourself and be seen? Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this goes back to why I posted that dance video. That dance video is not for anybody else. That dance video is for myself. It is showing up in a way that I want to see myself confident, happy, sexy, voluptuous, vivacious, full of me. That's why I post the video. And the past two years have been a test for me to really ride the edge of my visibility and test me to see how far I could go to show up for myself, be visible for myself, despite what anybody else says, right? Like I got the validation. I got the 40 million people saying, yeah, we like it, but it wasn't enough. And so what I had to do over and over, and I do this on the daily, y'all, on the daily, is I continue to show up for myself, to be visible for myself, to be honest and speak the truth and show the truth for myself. So you don't have to do it on social media. That's how I do it. But I'm asking you, what can you do to show up for yourself and be visible? I'd love to know your thoughts. Give me some feedback. Big love your way. I see you. I see you. I see you.